hi guys so welcome back to my channel this is d trends and d trends is an educational channel on youtube and what i do here is to help students who are preparing um, for the exams on government and literature okay this is a third video educational video on this channel so it's still a new channel i need you guys to please subscribe to the channel click on the like button and share the video to your friends please subscribe to the channel it helps to promote this video on youtube and also encourages me to keep bringing this kind of video to you guys okay please subscribe to the channel thank you so today we're going to continue from where we stopped okay in the last video we stopped at um last video we are considering 2021 jump government past questions and answers and um we stopped at question we stopped at question six so we are going to continue from question seven okay under socialism the control of power resides with the that should have peasants b bourgeois c um nobles and d proletariat okay now what's socialism okay socialism is a doctrine is a social and economic doctrine that encourages or promotes common good okay it's, it encourages common good and social welfare. It's against private ownership, okay, and control of property and natural resources. It believes that um, everybody has equal rights to natural resources and um, properties, okay? It's against private individuals um, being in charge of properties and natural resources that should be and that should be of common use to everyone. Socialism is against um, one person being the owner of, uh, let's say, a company, while others who are working um, work as slaves, okay? And one person being the one that is in charge, that um, decides what should be produced and how it should be produced and how much um, the workers are going to be paid, okay? So socialism um, actually advocates for workers Okay, for equal sharing of the profit, equal sharing of the um of what comes out of production among everybody who is working. Okay. Now let's revisit the question. Okay. On the socialism, the control of power resides with a dash. We have a peasants, B, bourgeois, C, nobles, and D, proletariat. Okay. Now peasants are the poor in society um bourgeois are the professionals okay the the middle class entrepreneurs the are um, the skilled office workers okay and option c option c nobles the nobles are the privileged ones in the society um they are the ones that that are wealthy they are wealthy and the wealth is as a result of some privileges okay so um, option d option d proletariat the proletariat are the unskilled laborer they are the working class people people who earn wages for a living especially people who are dependent on manual daily or casual level okay um these people um are unskilled workers and now socialism um actually advocates that they be inculcated in decision making process they should be inculcated so they shouldn't be treated like slaves since they are the ones who are doing the real job okay this is the correct answer okay under socialism the the control of power resides with the proletariat okay option Option D is the correct answer. Okay, now let's move to the next one. Marxism is directed against, we have option A, state ownership of means of production, B, materialism, C, the proletariat, and D, socialism. Now, Marxism is a political and economic theory developed by Karl Marx. And Marxism is all about analyzing the impact of uneven distribution of wealth and privileges in the society. Okay, it it, it deals with uneven distribution of wealth and privileges in the society. Okay, it's come it kicks against um certain group of people being the more privileged ones and the wealthy ones. Okay certain group of people being the more privileged ones and the worthy ones who are busy acquiring wealth to themselves okay so the, that's what marxism is all about is against people 
acquiring wealth and privileges to themselves against other people, not minding um, how um, how other people are faring, okay? So, um, Marxism is against um, acquisition of, unnecessary acquisition of wealth and um, privileges by a certain group of people in the society. And it stimulates the workers to protest against injustice, okay? This theory was developed in 19th century where the owners of companies were more interested in acquiring more wealth to themselves without burdening about the welfare of their workers, okay? So, Marxism actually kicks against such, um, such behavior. Now, let's see the questions again. Let's go back to the um, question. Marxism is directed against state ownership of the means of production, okay? And this is not the correct answer, okay? So state ownership um, means that the government is in control of the means of production, so it's not the correct answer. Materialism, on the other hand, is a value system that promotes um, wealth, possession, and um, pleasures, privileges over ethical or philosophical value, okay? It encourages, materialism encourages um, acquiring of wealth, acquiring of um, possessions, acquiring of, um, have acquiring privileges against value system, against, um, against what is morally acceptable, okay? So materialism is the correct answer. Marxism is against people acquiring wealth, a group of people acquiring wealth, acquiring privileges, okay? against um what is ethically acceptable at the detriment of other people okay that's what marxism is all about it does not it discourages um it discourages people certain group of people acquiring wealth to themselves without actually considering the people that are helping them acquire the wealth which are the laborers okay so marxism um is actually directed against materialism you should say the proletariat you already know the people that are the proletariat is unskilled laborers okay marxism is not against them rather it's for them okay so it's not against them option d socialism we already know what socialism is all about socialism calls for um for public rather than private ownership and control of um, property and natural resources okay so option b is the correct answer. Let's see the next one. Question nine. The rule of law implies that dash judges interpret the law. B lawyers interpret the law. C everyone is subject to the law and the legislature makes the law. In simple terms, rule of law simply means nobody is above the law. Okay, it's is a kind of a, is a kind of political ideal that um, subjects all citizens, all the institutions within a country, to the same law. Okay, it subjects all the citizens, the all the institutions within a country or a community. Okay, to the same law. Everyone is accountable to the same law. Okay, that is rule of law. Now let's see the question again. The rule of law implies that judges interpret the law. That's not what the rule of law is about. Um, B, lawyers interpret the law. No. See, everyone is subject to the law. Yes, this is the correct answer. Okay, rule of law implies that everyone, everyone is subject to the law. Option D, legislature makes the law. That's not what rule of law is about. Now, let's see the next one, question 10. Question 10, we have a bylaw is made by Dash, Parliament, Congress, an electoral college, and D, the local government. First, what is bylaw? Bylaw is a law that is made to govern a particular region, okay? Not the entire country or not the entire place, but a particular locality. It could be a local government, it could be a community, okay? Just a law that is meant to govern a local place and such laws are made by the local authorities i mean the bylaws the bylaws that are meant for the um for the locality or the community is meant by the local authorities so the correct answer is option d the local government okay not the parliament not the congress not an electoral college but the local government okay
okay all right guys that'll be all for today i hope you learned something new from it please if you did kindly subscribe to this channel click on the like button and share it to your friends please kindly subscribe to the channel thank you very much for watching and see you in my next video okay